I've had a horrible couple of days, I'll be quite honest, but hopefully today I can cheer myself up because I've had a box arrive, which isn't terribly unusual, I'm sure you'll agree. However, this one has come from a very good friend of mine from America, from Texas. This is full of parts and something fun for us to play with with the machine, and it arrived slightly open as well. So let's get it unboxed, check it all survived, did little tiny trip most of the way across the world, and see what my good friend Scott sent me in this box. Let's have a look. Hello, my vacuum cleaner chums, how are you today? Yes, it's always fun to receive boxes from fellow collectors, especially if you sort of know what's inside of it, but not fully. I've, sort of, I've, I've had clues about what's in here, but I don't fully know what's in here. Do we, Felix? No, we don't. So, very well packaged, despite the lid being open, I think. It's all going to survive, and I'm in need of some packaging, so that's excellent. And I see we've already got to go through it quite carefully because there's something in here. So we can't just go yeeting all of the bubble wrap out of the way and firing it off to the side because we might miss something important. So what's inside the first package? Oh, it is a bag door for a Ricard RC1400. Very nice indeed. Well, I'll start to pile things up and then we'll see how far we get afterwards. Ooh, nice bit of tractor paper there. Very good. Obviously, gone through the recycling bin, which is fair enough. Ooh, right, more stuff. Ah, no, this is a little bit of a clue. Oh, blimey. We have some filters for a Roomba, genuine Roomba filters. Wow, and a spare one there. So that's cool. That is a little bit of a clue as to what is in this box. Hmm. Two tools, which will go with this, I'm fairly sure. We have a very stubbly, hard dusting brush there and a little stubby crevice tool there. Very nice. Uh, more stuff. <gasps> Electrolux flying fanny dusting brush. There's a clue as to what else could be in here. I don't know where to start because I think I'm about to pull something out that's going to give the entire game away. Right, we have another package. Oh, I love sending parts. I sent parts to Scott before, I have to say, via another collector, Mr. Parvaz and Mr. AG123. Ooh, have a Rickard floor head. I've never seen a floor head like this before with nice rubber strips. Interesting to file that up and see. We might have to find the machine that fits it at some point. We can't find the machine that fits it because I don't actually know where it is. For those among you who have probably guessed, these I think are for my little Deu that I've not seen for years, but that's the back door for it. And these are obviously Ricar tools because my little Deu was sold as a Ricar in America. Right, more bubble wrap. Ah, another little packet. I'm trying to save the big thing to a last because I know what the big thing is and it's going to be amazing. But we'll carry on for a little bit. No, Phoenix, don't fly on my phone because now I've got to check that he hasn't pressed stop record. It's always fun. Right, what's in this box? Ooh. It is an iRobot dock. Look at that. Little dock for an iRobot. Put that with the rest of the other sort of segment it all, aren't we? Electrolux, Roomba, Ricard. More bubble wrap. More bubble wrap. Right. We have a wand. Telescopic wand, which does work. Look at that. This will fit the Ricard. And 
that lip here are the tool holders for it. Which I presume that goes on there. I can't see how else it would fit. Does it fit like that? You tell me, folks. But that's another notch down there for Rickard stuff. Bubble wrap, bubble wrap. I think we're down to the stuff that I've got to open up in order to see what's in the box. So there's one package. There's another package. Let's go through the rest of this. We have a metal wand with some sort of strange clip on it. And this, look. Ah, in fact, looking at that strange clip, I'd imagine it goes somewhere in there. Like that, maybe. Sure, the lot of you are going to know exactly what this is for now. I still fully don't, really. Oh, now I don't know how to get that out of there. Uh-oh, that was silly, wasn't it? Uh, we'll work that out later. That's fine. I think that's it for in the box. Yeah, that's all packaging now, so if we can pop that to one side and have a little bit more space in order to open these. Let's start with this box here. Box, packet, etc. Yes, Phoenix. What we have in here is a Roomba. Ooh, a Roomba. Wow. An American iRobot Roomba. Obviously this is in response to our terrible track record with robot devices. Mr. Scott has sent me one. Look! Ooh, fancy Aeroforce. What is this? This is a Roomba. Is there even a model number? What is, ah, 980. There we go. Model number 980. 19 to 24 volts. Yes! And all of this stuff here is a new robot vacuum cleaner for us to play with. Although there's actually one more thing for this, which we'll need to look at in a minute. So we'll pop this to one side for now, but probably come back to it separately, because there is something that Mr. Scott couldn't send with that, which we'll come on to later. This is the last packet, and actually the one that we've been discussing for a couple of years, actually. And finally got round to being sent and whatnot, Mr. Scott went through his collection of random vacuum cleaner parts. Look, we have a teal green cable with lots of clips and so on and such forth. A plug at one end and a socket at the other, so there's that. And what goes with that? Well, it's an Electrolux PN1, I do believe. Yes. <laughs> an Electrolux power nozzle. To a lot of you American chums, this is going to be ever so familiar. But to me, sat here in cloudy, gloomy Oxfordshire, it's very, very rare indeed. And of course, you know what it goes with. In fact, I've got it out ready. Ha! <laughs> goes with my automatic G. We're finally getting some of the original matching tools that go with it. And I'd imagine that this wand goes with it as well. And obviously I've got the hose and stuff. So that is fantastic. And I think what we should do now is really have a play with it. You know, Mr Scott did say that he sort of had to cobble together various bits of cable in order to make this work. Which is fair enough. Nothing wrong with that, and this part here will go into the machine. I think, like, oh, pull that back a little bit, like so. And then, obviously, this goes ah, this goes up the hose, but obviously, I don't have the original hose with mine. I have, and it's all off here, I have a very long. <laughs> pneumatic hose that I just shoved into a hose end because, you know, the hose I had with this leaked a lot of air, as they do. So, yeah, look, we've got more of a toolkit here. So I think we're actually going to have to cut this down in order to fit this cable, which is, you know, OK, you can deal with that. And pretty easy, since this is just screwed into this hose end here, 
So that's cool. I mean, how short is it? I can't really extend this because it's all moulded. Well, I say it's all moulded. There is a bit of tape around there, so I suppose we could extend it. Not that, not that much in it, really. All of that, and I presume this all goes up the wand like so, and then ooh, somehow connects to here. Let me let me get worked out how we're going to adjust the hose and clip all the wires together and then we'll fire up the Electrolux power nozzle. Okay, some thought and conversations later. This is all just sort of what Mr Scott had lying around really. Obviously his random fact scrap pile, the same as my random fact scrap pile, probably the same as your random fact scrap pile. But this is where we need to start. We'll work on these later. I found out how to take the wand apart. And yeah, we have two of these inner cables which won't plug into each other like this. So think about that in a minute. What we need to do first really is to chop down the hose because you know, if we need to have this sat, I think actually on this bent end here. Obviously I've got the wrong bent end for my machine but in theory that's probably our end almost that fits in there and then we can put it down the hose like so I'm gonna make it a pretty short hose although probably the same length as it was before so I think if we chop it there we're gonna have enough room and uh, lose a lot of hose. And part of me is wondering, obviously, I don't wish to destroy something that I just had, but, you know, this is all a little bit tatty anyway. Do I literally chop and then just run a whole length of, you know, custom wire, perhaps even using these, you know, and try and hack it so it goes into the wand? Because I, I want to keep this nice because the PN wand, but I don't know really. It's either chop this hose and we have a short hose or extend the cable and we keep the longer hose. I suppose we could just chop the hose couldn't we and just have a shorter hose. Only a crush proof pneumatic hose I've got some more spares anyway I think we'll do that to start with then I won't upset anybody by chopping what is probably quite a rare power cable wire. You have to let me know my American chums how rare is this in your country and then yeah I can still okay you can still work it and the machine is still quite long so let's get this disposable hose chopped down redone and this wire run well stage one is done we have our hose all strapped up and blimey how thin must the actual official hose be because these barely fit at all and there's quite a bit of strain on them but they fit nonetheless and now I'm left with the same conundrum that I had before really and it's how to connect this top piece to this piece with only this spare wire obviously the other one of these runs through here but this is the only one that I've got and I'm sort of thinking having messaged Mr Scott and asked him his opinion that if I chop this down I chop it flat and then thin it out, it should push into there and just make a nice, you know, a nice daisy chain flex really. And then if I chop this end down a bit, so it fits in there, which it should do without those extra flaps there, should just make a nice little flying lead to go between there in the absence of anything else really, because I don't have anything else to work with and don't particularly want to ruin this bit because it sits quite nicely on there. So yeah, I think this cable is going to have to be amended. Well, I have done it, I think, certainly version one anyway. We have the green cable coming very unceremoniously to there. And then this is all back together, the wand is the wand. And on this poor little wand dinner, I butchered the ends in order to thin them right down. And now, this part will fit in here and then clip onto there and then this part will now plug in to the wand and 
with that done, <laughs> we can fit the power nozzle on, put its little connector up into the bottom of the wand like that, and crikey, I think we're ready. Gosh, this is short now, but that's fine. We can always redo it another day. I've got plenty of black hose. Oh, this is heavy as well. I haven't picked it up yet. This is now ready to go. So I have it nearly ready to plug in off camera. I didn't want to plug it in in case it went live. So we now have power to the machine. Ooh. Yeah, it's done. And I've left some mess on the floor as well. louder than the machine if I unplug the power head the machine is whisper quiet this is by far louder oh it's so nice to use I've only seen these in pictures and now I have them in my front room uh, so heavy It is groovy ever so nicely. And then all I really have to do is take this off. Yes, Felix. And then, yeah, that is the right way around, I can go back to the straight suction tools like so. Oh, everything's falling apart. Oh, yes. Oh yes, yes, yes. I think there is some further work to do. The machine needs refurb anyway, and I am just feeling it. I am just a little bit tempted, given how you know tatty the end of that cable is, to literally chop it here and just run an entire length down into this loom here, although I then lose the joint, but I don't think there's a lot I can do about that, or at least tidy up this bit. But for now, we've got it working. We can worry about the rest of it all later. That is most excellent. And of course, I now have the official, actual, in this very nice condition, Electrolux dusting brush, which sits on there like so. Ha! Huh, fantastic. I'm now actually wondering about, whilst we have an vacuum out, ooh, it might fit inside this Ricard floor tool and we can have a play with that. Oh, it doesn't fit inside there, but the end of the wand does seem to accept a 32mm ish hose. It will do. That's actually quite nice. It's sticking itself down. Obviously, it doesn't really fit at all, but we can work on that. Oh, oh it be sacrilege, isn't it? Me using a Ricard floor tool on an old electrolux. Comment down below. But for now, that will do. Obviously, you don't go with this at all. So, Electrolux Automatic G now has some more stuff, and I think it's now ready to be completely refurbished. Um, because I don't think its airflow is quite good, and yeah, I'm going to try and do something with all of this to see, you know, how I can make it work. It's a shame I've only got one of those hose ends because I could probably make a just electric toolkit for it. But I don't know. Problem for another day. Comment down below on what you would do. Obviously, this head needs a nice refurb. It should come up okay. It works very well. It's just you know a little bit 
old and worn. And I've just noticed that there's a little, there's a little thing here which oh, I can't get into. My screwdriver's too small. I think it is time to move on to something a little bit more modern in the form of this Roomba 980. On to the next shiny, exciting thing, which is this Roomba. Now, yeah, let's just take out this paper, which will be here to stop the bumpers from getting damaged in shipping. Well, very good idea, that is. There we go. Put those out of the way. And, well, first of all, it's not going to work. And if I flip it upside down, and I think all we have to do, I've never seen this type of brush roll in real life. I'm very excited to try it. If we remove this cover here, big hole, there is no battery in here. Yes, despite the fact that you can buy a battery off of eBay and have it drop shipped straight from China with zero care, USPS refused to accept this parcel with a battery in it. So the perfectly good battery was taken out and thrown away and I bought this with again nothing special on the box to say that it's battery what a bloody stupid con that is so have ourselves just a cheap generic battery for now for this Roomba blow the dust out pop that in put that down Ooh, it beeped that's a very good sign that means it's hopefully going to work so yeah had to buy it a new battery because otherwise you know it, it wouldn't have been shipped and it just wasn't worth the argument with the postal service about it so there's that you, ooh, turned on ooh, we have some leds coming up obviously no screen we have an empty battery it's saying we might have to It, it, it runs enough. Wow. And obviously, this I think is just one of those knock around. Ah, that's so loud. That's like a little mini vax. That's pretty cool. Still need to work. Oh, it, ah, I think it has Wi Fi. So that might be good. Obviously, I have no idea how this works at all. Here is the dirt bin. A filter is fitted. Oh, this is excellent. And, you know, for all my moaning about Roombas, I've, oh, I've graduated to Nito because they're square and I've always just thought that's better. Now I can decide if it is or not for sure. But the low battery warning has just come on. And that brings us to this charger, which comes with a figure of eight IEC American style lead, which we don't need because... I looked under here and thanks to globalisation and all this crap being sold at the same time, where is it? It is a 240 volt capable dock. So that means that all I had to do was go into my box of random cables that everybody should have and find an UK 3 pin plug. Ah, now I've got no flipping power over here. Dang it, let me go get an extension lead for that very short cable. Oh. And then in theory, if I plug this in, it shouldn't go bang. It didn't go bang. We have ourselves a green light. So oh, we can assume the position that so many robot vacuums have assumed in my house. The will it charge position, but I think this will. If I can get it centred on the pins, which is going to be... Ah, there we go. Oh, yep, aha! We is now charging we have a flashing battery symbol on there oh how fantastic and we have a load of spare filters and i think this is just the how to ah rips it no. yeah this is just the how to install the filters on oh, the maintenance that the bin maintain after each use filter maintain and replace bloody debris extractors replace every 12 months is that brush rolls yeah, that must be. The debris extractors are the brush roll. So, what I'm now going to do is actually work out what this is, how it works, maybe find a manual and try and get the Wi-Fi working because that will tell us everything and it can have a good old charge with its brand new battery at the same time. I'm also going to do some housekeeping and say that we're going to say goodbye 
to this Rickar stuff for now, because even if I found the daily machine, as it is buried in the loft somewhere, it is in no fit state to put these nice shiny parts on. So I'm going to put these away and we shall hopefully see these in the art video. I am now going to soon go and find it out because I'm excited because we now have the missing tool door and the missing tools. We had the hose and we had the machine. There's got some bags in the shed as well. But obviously, will it have a flow? Who knows? So that's it for that. The Electrolux is that again. We'll see that again when it's all been refurbished and looking lovely. So we'll give this a bit of a charge and we'll see if I can show you a bit more of it in this video because it, it doesn't really need a refurb. This is literally ready to use. I might have to keep this one downstairs to give it some use. Update on the Vorwerk VR300 because I've not done one on that yet. What happens is you open up the app, look, and it says I am offline. It has a Wi-Fi problem. I have set it to a static IP address and yeah, it falls off the Wi-Fi after a day. So it could be interesting actually to have a second Wi-Fi bot on the network because I'm not entirely sure if it's my network or the Vorwerk. So let's see if Roomba is better at keeping its bits and bobs alive than Nito are. Right, I'll come back when this is charged. Well, it's been a while and if we, oh no, app draw, go to the iRobot app, we can see that we now have Ryan the Roomba almost ready to go. I mean, he's charging, but if I press vacuum everywhere, I love that. That's pretty cool. It talks to you as well. It weighs at the minute. The app set up is an absolute sod. But yeah, he runs, he cleans. And he changes the power mode when it goes from hard floor, which it just has done, back onto the rug. Which is wicked. Like, pause the cleaning. Yep, yeah, send home. If you're going to find the base station, put the battery on there. There's one way, one way. Good boy, that's it. Get home. There it goes. Ah, oh, wicked. No point sending them out now because as you may be, oh, how did it go? Well, it, 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 it didn't go. Please don't ask me again. There we go. We'll stop that now. And yes, Ryan works. There's no point sending them out now because like the ball work, it gets caught up in all of my tripods. And we actually have one last thing. Crikey, it's a good job Scott said. Oh, did you find the bag clip for... They day woo, yes, this would be very important. I'm going to stick it back in this piece of bubble wrap so that I don't lose it. And it goes with that. So that was a very good shout that <laughs> you reminded me to look for that. The robot works well, it needs a full charge. The electronic stuff is brilliant. And that's going to be it for this video. The Roomba, it's just going to go into service really. Apparently, <laughs> Scott got it a year old. What happened was the side brush had broken, so the lady got rid of it, which is why it's so pretty clean. I mean, there's a few paint marks, I guess we could clean it up a little bit, but it's fine like that. The Electrolux is now going to go in for a full refurb, and hopefully we'll get an after video, as is the day you. Lots to do, lots of cool things to show you but only when they're ready. So, thank you very much, Scott, for spending rather lots of money sending this stuff all around the world. Thank you, Parcel Force, for having to post me the reference number to pay the import charges rather than just using the tracking number or the details of mine that you already had. And thank you all for watching. Comment down below, especially my American viewers. You know, what do you think of this floor head? What do you think of my wiring job on the Electrolux? That's not permanent. I'm going to have a look at photos of how it should be and see if we can tidy it up just a little bit. And yeah, my plan B is perhaps to butcher this cable and just make the whole thing much longer. Not sure yet. We've got plenty of time to work all that out. 
And when I do, I will show you what I've done. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and I, and all of this stuff, will see you soon. Bye-bye.